This episode of Yet Another Old Laptop found on eBay by Nathan is brought to you by Autonomous and their range of great standing desks. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. A few months ago I bought a Compaq Armada laptop off of eBay for only $33 plus postage. And this thing is from 1997, includes the original box and has a heap of accessories. I think it's time we open up that box and see exactly what we got. Usually I'd be pretty rough when opening the box, however I don't want to damage the original packaging this was sent in. I'm glad it also didn't sustain any noticeable damage during postage. The box describes the laptop within as having a 150MHz Pentium processor, 16MB of RAM, a 1.6GB hard drive and Windows 95. All for the significantly discounted price of $1250 Australian dollars, which is roughly $2100 adjusted for inflation. Inside the box we're greeted with a large instructional card telling us how to set up the Compaq Armada. Under that there appears to be an accessory pack and last of all is the laptop in its original foam inserts. It also looks as if the accessory pack appears to have most if not all the documentation this laptop would have come with back in 1997. We've got the charging brick, what looks to be a composite video cable, the reference guide and relevant support contact numbers, which I'm sure none of which are still active. There's also a manual for the game Load Runner, which I assume comes pre-installed on the Armada. A sealed Windows 95 manual with no disk surprisingly, although there is a very official looking certificate of authenticity. Both the Lotus and Microsoft Works manuals are also sealed, which leads me to believe this didn't actually come with any physical install media. Removing the fragile packaging foam, we get our first look at the small laptop within. The most striking thing about the device is what appears to be an external battery holder. This is most likely why the laptop itself appears so small, because it has no internal battery. Before we take things further, I think it's time we upgrade this really old desk and replace it with a much nicer one, all thanks to Autonomous who sent over their motorized standing desk. Let's set it up. Alright, this thing's definitely kind of big. And here we have, weighing in at a back-breaking 67 pounds, the box containing the legs and lots of the desk. Yes, this is a very heavy package. And inside the box, we're greeted with lots of nice white foam. Perhaps I'll insulate my house if I ever build one. And something I learned from helping my girlfriend build some IKEA furniture last week is that you should definitely keep the instructions and read through them properly. Inside the first box are all of the main components including the two beefy linear actuators that allow you to adjust the desk's height. I've actually been meaning to buy a new desk for quite some time. My old one has seen a lot of use over the last 8 years or so. The place I bought it from has long since closed down and become abandoned. The Le Cornu factory was an iconic part of Anzac Highway in Adelaide for many decades, but I think the nail in the coffin for that furniture business was the arrival of IKEA next to the airport. This autonomous desk as far as I know was sent from America and I must say the packaging was definitely built to withstand it. There are simply so many layers and heaps of cardboard to cushion the desktop inside. I went with a white surface which is definitely going to show up much easier on camera compared to the dark wood finish my last desk had. The rest of the desk came together pretty easy which was nice. Okay cool, so we've gotten this far and there's something I've just realised. There's no way I'd be able to fit the completed desk through the door frames to get into my room. So let's go disassemble my old desk, get it all out of there, then we can do the final assembly of this in my room. Let's go. My current desk setup hasn't changed since mid last year when I replaced my desktop with a Dell G7 laptop. Other things I'll have to find a new home for include some portable hard drives and my old computer that used to sit right on this very desk. I'll also be doing my fair share of vacuuming. It's pretty obvious why I think. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have glued the power boards to the other side of the desk. My mini crowbar did make the removal a bit easier thankfully. With all the screws loosened and drawers emptied, the old desk can finally be dismantled. I plan on keeping the desk and I'll likely use it when I move to a different house. Now was also a good time to vacuum the foam panels on my wall which I couldn't easily reach before. The old desk really didn't allow you to vacuum behind it either. This is something the new standing desk will make a lot more possible though. With the final assembly nearly completed, I tried to manage the cables somewhat neatly and keep them out of the way. And here we have the final desk, which easily supports my laptop and monitor with its 100kg weight limit. I ended up creating two height presets, one for sitting and one for comfortably standing. 
playing Minecraft and doing work will never be the same again. Big thanks to Autonomous for sending this over. Opening up the laptop, it basically shows no signs of wear apart from the cracking near the hinges. Every single one of these laptops I've come across has had the same problem though, and it looks as if there is the base 16 megabytes of RAM. This model also came with a dock that housed the CD-ROM drive, which it can't seem to find because there wasn't one included. That startup chime brings back so many pleasant childhood memories. The display exhibits an insane amount of ghosting and does make the cursor very hard to see, so I enabled pointer trails to make it easier. The display can only output 256 colors at a resolution of 800 by 600. Compaq really skimped out on the display with this device. I do recall the eBay seller mentioning that the floppy drive didn't work, and sure enough, it wouldn't spin or read discs. This is something I'll have to fix later in the video. Installed is a product tutorial with a delightfully 90s intro jingle. Here you can learn the ins and outs of your brand new compact and receive a blue ribbon for your efforts. Unsurprisingly, the 3D Maze screensaver is rather blurry. In fact, any motion on screen is quite hard to look at, so let's shut it down and see what we can do about the broken floppy drive. It really doesn't seem like this compact was used for very long. I wish I could find the history of this particular unit. The fact that the stickers are intact does lead me to believe it was never owned by a child. Oh, before we try some repairs, I just realized that there is a heap of MIDI tracks from the movie Titanic. I'll admit, I still cry when I watch this movie. Sadly, this didn't come with the long battery that slots into here, but the holder can be detached if you want to run it off mains power anyway. Ejecting the floppy drive didn't exactly go as planned though. As I just found out, the plastics on the back are pretty brittle. I managed to snap off several pieces just trying to remove the floppy drive. And the manual also says to access the RAM, I have to pry up on the plastic on the back. There's no way I'm going to be doing that. This laptop is also pretty unique in that you can detach the trackpad. There were also track ball options available if you wanted one. As far as trackpads go, this one is pretty bad. I'd far prefer to use an external mouse. And while we're at it, here's the Fujitsu hard drive with a manufacture date of June 97. I wasn't even a year old at that time. With the enclosure open, we get our first look at the problem drive, which at a surface level doesn't show any obvious signs of an issue. Time to dig deeper, which required the removal of four Phillips head screws around the casing. And underneath the eject mechanism is a fairly obvious problem. Now that I've opened up the floppy drive, I can see why it wasn't working. The drive belt inside had completely perished. Although this is a pretty common occurrence with turntables and CD-ROM drives alike. Luckily, you can buy a big bag of those drive belts for only like a few dollars online. Before we put the new belt into place, it's important to remove the rest of the perished material, which there was no shortage of hidden under the drive motor. I must admit, it was a bit fiddly, but I eventually found a drive belt that was narrow enough to fit into the groove. That seems to have solved the problem. And since I've gone to the effort of opening up the drive, I also cleaned the heads and lubricated the stepper motor using some dry lubricant with Teflon. This should help the heads move freely, if they didn't before. With the drive reassembled, I was very glad that it could still eject the discs. Using a small amount of super glue, I began reattaching parts of the enclosure that had snapped off. It seems like a lot of the plastics surrounding the laptop are pretty fragile, and after this dries, I'm hoping it'll still be strong enough to hold the floppy drive in place. As much as I'd love to fully disassemble this laptop and see what's inside, I feel like I'd be doing more damage than I'd be doing good. I will, however, be applying thread locker to the hinge screws to hopefully hold it in place. If I tried to fix the cracking scene here, it would likely break again, but in different places. The hinge itself seems to be really strong, and I don't believe it would get any worse. I really had my fingers crossed, and luckily it did read the floppy disk. With it all back together, I think it's time we give it a clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. The laptop as a whole is surprisingly clean, and I'd be surprised if it was used more than a year or two before it was packed back into this box. The keyboard also feels pretty nice to type on, so let's try using this very old Windows 95 laptop. I don't think I could ever get tired of hearing that startup chime. It seems as if 3D graphics can't be displayed in full screen, even after pressing the function and F8 keys. 
Even after setting the system resolution to 640x480, the display didn't seem to be able to scale the image to fit the whole panel. The pre-installed game Load Runner seems to be a reimagining of the original game from 1983. This is definitely suited to this display because the background doesn't move at all. Oh boy, a free trial of America Online. It's crazy to think that there are still millions of people around the world using dial-up internet. I really don't envy that. One of my favourite DOS games, the original Duke Nukem works great on here, if you do ignore the horrible ghosting during on-screen motion. In a game such as Wolfenstein 3D, that ghosting is nearly enough to make you nauseous. I also found the folder with all the MIDI songs. This rendition of George Harrison's My Sweet Lord is pretty good, and as are a lot of songs found on here. Last of all, let's create a masterpiece in Microsoft Paint, as is tradition on this YouTube channel. The screen may be pretty bad, but for everyday office use, this would have been totally fine. The design of the Armada 4150 in my opinion is pretty awesome. The port selection is pretty limited unless you've got the dock however. For a laptop from 1997, the speakers are pretty good, and having a battery holder that doubles as a keyboard riser is pretty smart. And five years later, the struggling brand Compaq merged with HP for a reported $24.2 billion. So there we have it, a really interesting laptop from 1997. The form factor is pretty interesting, but the CST and display is honestly pretty horrible. Either way, I'm very glad to have this in my collection, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.